Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, we will be talking about autonomous equations in differential equations. And this topic would be actually under the separable equations. Okay, so let's start now. A differential equation in which the equation does not appear explicitly is called autonomous equation. So, ito siya. So, this is the reason why I want this to be under with our separable equations in our differential equation because of the fact that in order for us to solve for the differential equation of this type, we actually use uh, separations of variables. So, we're technically doing se um, variable separable. So, in other words, an equation of this form, this one, that's dy dt, which is equal to a function of y, is actually autonomous equation. If you may be reading some references, autonomous equation is also referred as self-regulating equations. In this case, your y equals y of t is a function of variable t. So... This is the reason why I am including this autonomous equation under variable separable equations, mainly because in order for us to solve the solution of this differential equation, we actually use the idea of separable equations. So in this case, your dy uh, dt, which is equal to f of y, you can actually convert that into dy f of y provided your f of y is not zero that's equal to dt so taking the integral you actually and then you evaluate that on the interval y sub zero to y and so you actually get t minus t sub zero so as i have introduced the concept of equilibrium point on the previous video i'm gonna say that this is also well uh, celebrated on this concept here, the equilibrium point. It's because this concept, this solution is particular important to the autonomous equations. In this case, we now have to identify that equilibrium point may be stable or unstable. And to check the stability test, before that, I just like to verify first two things. Number one is asymptotically stable and number two is asymptotically unstable so ano ibig sabihin nito so when we say asymptotically stable we we mean that all of the sufficiently small disturbances would actually die out so to illustrate that intuitively let's say for example kunyari yung paganon mo yung function mo so you have a point here. So kapag imo-move yun, imo-move mo siya ng konti, babalik pa rin siya. Babalik pa rin siya. Unlike with unstable, kapag imo-move siya ng konti, bigla lang siyang tataas, papalayo or something. So that's the difference between being stable and unstable. And in order for us to check the stability, because if we will be given with a differential equation, we will be able to get the equilibrium point. So of course, we have to check if it's unstable or stable. Uh, we have the stability test. So similar with what we have the on a critical point when we study calculus. If our, let's say, our y star is the equilibrium point. So if this f of y star is greater than zero, so ibig sabihin, unstable siya. And uh, if it's less than zero, stable siya. Okay, example, solve the IVP. So your IVP is this one, with initial conditions, this one. Yan. So given that you have this differential equation, you can see that our equilibrium point is zero. However, this is yet inconclusive kasi hindi mo siya ma-identify agad eh. Paano mo siya ipa-plug in dyan? How would you know this is greater than zero or less than zero? So it's inconclusive regarding whether it's stable or unstable. Now, let's double check for the solution of this one. Remember that this given uh, differential equation, I can write that as dy dt equals y squared. And so, I would get dy y squared equals dt. 
And so, if I'm gonna take the integral of both sides, so, mangyayari, this becomes negative y to the negative 1 equals t plus c. Yan. And so, if I'm gonna convert this, correct me if I'm wrong, diretso na, this is negative 1 over t plus c. Yan. So, this is now the explicit solution for the given differential equation. So, if we want to use the initial value problem, so you, our t equals t sub 0 and then y equals y sub 0, we find the arbitrary constant c. So, in this case, our arbitrary constant c is negative t sub 0 minus y sub 0 to the negative 1, which is simply the same as y sub 0 t sub 0 plus 1 over y sub 0, and that's entirely negative. So observe that if we want to be interested with the fact that if y sub 0 is 0, this means that this integral curve is non-singular equilibrium solution. Kasi abscisa to eh. That's technically the horizontal axis. So this means to say this will be our integral form or integral curve of the differential equation. Okay, so let's have the first theorem. The first theorem says here that if you have f of y that is continuously differentiable function on the closed interval a, b, yan, and then your f of y is positive except only for two endpoints. So, big sabihin, kunyari, this is your closed interval a, b. So, positive siya. So, andito siya sa taas except only for the starting and the end point inside the closed interval na magiging zero siya. So, if the initial value, which is the y sub 0, is chosen within the interval a, b. So, ibig sabihin, this is your interval, and then your function here is 0 on both ends, pero na positive siya on some other points. And then, you choose your um, initial value y sub 0 inside this open interval. Then, yung IVP mo, which is this IVP here, with the initial condition, this one, has a solution. So, ibig sabihin, we're actually talking about the existence of the solution of this autonomous differential equation. So, this is quite different from the existence theorem on the general differential equation. So, ito, naka-specify siya for autonomous equation. So, mangyayaring meron kang solution on this interval here. So, that's range from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, on a single note, Kung sa single dimension tayo, we're only talking about the set of real numbers. Such that, yung limit niya ng y of t as t approaches negative infinity is yung mismong a. And then, the limit as, as t approaches positive infinity is mismong b. Yung end ng kabilang interval. I mean, yung inter theorem 2 will be the counterpart of our um, theorem 1 because it says here that if you have a function that is continuous on the closed interval, so same condition, pero meron siyang additional that has only one null. And your null, y star on the open interval a, b, you name, lead the, the, uh, you name this as f of y star. So this is now the null. And f of y is non-zero for every y value in inside the open interval. And if the integral of this form diverges, so ibig sabihin yung limit niya does not exist, this IVP has a unique constant solution. So this, ito rin yung counterpart ng uniqueness theorem. Pero may counterpart siya kasi aside from having unique solution, so aside from this, uh, aside from the fact that this theorem can give the uniqueness result, we also consider that it also provides multiple solutions when this integral converges. So ibig sabihin yung limit ng integral na ito exists. That's it. So this theorem 1 and 2 here are now essential as, as we know for a fact that this will actually guarantee the existence and uniqueness of a solution. So with this, we will apply some application problems for this differential equation. Okay, so let's start with the first problem. It says here that the bone marrow of a human constantly produces red blood cells. Um, there's a name for these red blood cells, I forgot. 
these red blood cells because they have a finite lifespan. So approximately that's 120 days. And uh, this number may be modeled by the solution of a autonomous differential equation. And this is the model. So here in this case, this is A and B are coefficients and are positive constant. So this A here determines the rate of natural loss of red blood cells. The oxygen level in kidney tissue determines the production of RBC, and it's called as EPO. And the level of EPO is proportional to the rate of the RBC production. So we want to solve this differential equation. Actually, um, this model is actually introduced in the... In the paper, like this is a research paper for modeling by Arino. Arino et al. Yung title ng research nila is Stability Analysis of Models of Red Blood Cells. So this is a research paper model na to. Okay, so anyway, um, we want to solve this differential equation. So in order for us to do that, this one... We want to do the separation of variable. Drop lang to ha. So I have du. Tama ba? And then eto sila. Lipat natin to lahat sa baba. So magkakaroon tayo ng negative a. U plus b over u. Which is equal to dt. So if we want to integrate this. Eto. Dito lang muna. I want to integrate that. That becomes t plus c. C1 lang muna. And then this one, we have integral of u du all over negative a u squared plus b. Tama ba? You can check it for yourself. Eto. You have to simplify this and then simplify entirely. You actually get this. And so I'd get, tama ba? This is the same as 1 to a integral of the derivative of b minus a u squared equals b minus a u squared. Tama ba? Kasi if you want to let this actually as a single entity yung denominator, that's v equals a u squared plus b. That's negative, no? So if you want to take the derivative, mangyayari, this is negative 2 a u plus, ah, wala na. Yan. AU. So, ibig sabihin, um, dv over negative 2a is equal to u. So, ibig sabihin, yung u mo is technically the derivative of this times the negative 1 over 2a. Okay? So, that means this is equivalent to negative 1 over 2a. So, integral niyan, that is ln of b minus a u squared. Tama? And so this is t plus c1. So your c1 is arbitrary constant lang. And also this becomes, tama ba? This is ln of b minus a u squared raised to 1 half. Uh, so 1 to a pala. Ganyan. Or simply, kung titingnan natin, pwede bang ganito? Uh, ah, sige, eto yun na lang. And so, if we simplify it further, kayo na lang bahala. Ang mangyayari, uh, this is b minus a u squared equals a c e to the negative 2 a t. And so, uh, in this case, c is equal to e to the negative 2 a c1 over a. Hence, I have u of t equals this b over a minus c e to the negative 2 a t raised to 1 half. Tama ba? Tama no? Kasi bali eto, ililipat ko siya dyan, magiging negative to. Eto, magiging positive yan. Okay, so tapos i-divide ko both sides by a. So magkakaroon na tayo ng a, b over a. And then, ito mawawala to. So, ito lang yung natitira. I'm sorry. Ito mawawala tong A dyan. Ito lang yung natitira. And then, take the square root. 
because my naka two so ito yung one half yan and so this is now our differential equation the solution of our differential equation that's it so if you have any question or clarification please let me know so next problem suppose a country borrowed from one of the wealthiest ancestors 24 24 dollars so that's way too big na siguro by then 200 years back at an interest rate of at 8% compounded continuously. So how much an ER should get from this investment and find the amount after 300 years? So how do we solve this? Sige nga. So we let S of T. So ito yung the amount of, nakadrop lang to high the formal amount of money. So this is the capital plus the interest. So our t is measure uh, our years is measured measured in t, year, t years so that's the years okay and initially s of 0 that's actually the 24 dollars ito yung hiniram di ba so ibig sabihin yung s of t mo will be the uh, will be the result of accumulated interest in this case this is proportional to the interest rate of 8% so mangyayari so mangyayari s of t so label ko ha gross with accumulated interest and then this is proportional to interest rate interest rate is 8% this is just the same as 0 0.08 tama so this means then it grows siya, so ibig sabihin there is a differential equation. So that's d s of t, dt is equal to 0 0.08, this one, proportional, so that's s of t. Yan. So if we want to get the separate, um, if we want to separate this, mangyayari, this is d s of t, that's over s of t, and that's equal to z Tama ba? This is 0 0.08 pala yan. So this is dt. And so if we want to get the integral of both sides, magkakaroon tayo ng s of t equals c e to the 0 0.08t. Tama? So ang case na lang dito, pwede nating dito na lang siya pa, pa iwan. So in this case, um s of 200, mangyayari this is 24 e to the tama ba so at at year 200 so this is s of 200 that is 24 kasi di ba 24 dollars yung initial rate so initial amount rather e to the 16 tama that's approximately kayo nang bahala ha use your calculator nakakalculate na kasi ako 2. 1, 3, 2, 7, you need round off ko na lang time, is 10 to the 8, which is approximately 200 million dollars. Yan. And then, the amount after 300 years, so that's S of 300, that is 24 E to the 300, that's 24 ba? So approximately that's um mga ganito 6 mga 6.35739 nag set na ako ng solution dito ha kayo nang bahala mag-check on your calculator let's tend to the eleven. that's it so if you have any question or clarification please let me know okay that's all for today thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or clarification please let me know so that we can discuss on that and for those who are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that i'll be uploading soon thank you and have a great day